Welcome back, everybody, to the Los Angeles Angels Rebuilds. We enter the episode at the beginning of August, two months left to go on the season before we reach the postseason. And right now, there is a three way tie for that third wild card spot. And we do have the tiebreaker right now because we have one more one and one more loss than the Tigers and Mariners. But it is extremely tight. We're also right behind the Orioles and the Rays. And we are 11 games back from the Astros. So if we're going to make the playoffs, we have got to be one of these top three wild card teams. We've won the first two games against Miami, uh, thanks to some really good pitching. We go into game three with John Means on the mound, which should be good enough to get the win. But we are facing Alcantara, who is a great pitcher, a sub four ERA. But John Means has only kind of gotten better uh, since the episode in like may where we focused on him for a game but kyle tucker is uh, sw swinging a hot bat right now so is julian and if tucker can keep pulling his numbers up to close the year then this offense is going to really come to life they've already been one of the better offenses across the major leagues but if the guy that we brought in on a seven-year contract can finally step up and play like the superstar that we thought he was going to be then that would really help us out we also acquired pitcher Brennan Williamson via trade last episode, swapping him out for Zach Neto straight up. And he's been solid for us so far, not great, but going to look for him to hopefully get a showcase game today and see if he can put together a solid outing. But we also called up Caden Dan last episode too. He's really only had like one or two really bad outings, but those have kind of ruined his numbers right now with a 1.91 ERA. I'm going to give him a few more games here, but if he does not figure things out, then we might have to go with another option elsewhere. Because right now, these AAA guys we've been calling up so far have not really panned out. But his FIP is honestly pretty low. It's one of the lowest on the entire team. Like right above John Means, right below Joe Ryan. So I feel like these basic numbers down here for whipping area are kind of inflated right now. We also have several players that are ready for extensions, and a lot of these guys are already on the 40-man roster. And, uh, I mean, the first guy that I really want to bring back on a long-term deal is going to be Edward Julian. And I'm going to try and give this guy a big contract, you know, worth more than what he would probably get if he does become a free agent. Now, he is only in his fourth year of service, but... He kind of wants a five-year deal, and honestly, I am here for it. If he wants a five-year deal, or uh, longer than five years, then he would want a uh, salary, you know, north of $20 million, which we can't afford easily. And I think, I mean, how much are we uh, paying Kyle, Kyle Tucker? Like $32 million per season. So if we're paying him that much, and Julian is outplaying him by a mile, I think Julian deserves, like, you know, 10 mil less if that's what he wants. He is pretty much at the highest overall that he can be right now. He will be in a star role for us. So if we go north of six years or seven years, I mean, six years sounds pretty good to me. He would be 31 by the time that is up or 32. And uh, I think that's a good spot to get a deal done. So I will increase it by a little bit. And actually, I think we could probably get this done with less than his ideal salary. So, I mean, that would be great. His morale is very high. So let's make the offer. And Edward Julian has been re-signed on a big six-year deal. He is now under contract through the 2032 season. That's going to be huge for this team going forward. Now, he is not the only one. But Nolan Shano actually does want that much money per year. But I think he has also proven at 24 years old that he deserves to be a mainstay on this roster for years to come. So we're at least going to offer, well, I guess we can offer a lot less of a salary than I was expecting. Because it looks like he wants 25 or more, you know, after the first couple years of the contract. But if we can get him in here for longer, then I don't see why we wouldn't do that. So this deal has pretty good interest and... He would want about 14.7 mil per year in total. And honestly, I think that is totally worth doing. We're paying a bit more per year 
um, in the first couple of years, but this is going to get a more longer term deal done twice what the initial contract would get. So I feel comfortable doing this. We can afford it and uh, going to get him under contract for a long time. Now we've got a pretty big question. Logo no hoppy, same service time as Edward Julian. He's batted way better this year, but I but you know has has had a lot less playing time. He's mostly playing against lefties. He's batted 246. He's never really been, you know, a great average batter, but the slugging is up this year, his highest uh in his career so far. OPS the highest as well. I think his war is up there too at 1.2. So he has kind of had a bounce back year. Still waiting for him to really find his stride. But for Ohapi, I'm definitely down for a five-year deal. I'm curious if we go to three. I mean, it doesn't really change how much money he would want. So if we give him this offer, then we are pretty much getting him, Sean Owell, Julian under contract until they're at least 30 years old each. And this would leave us with... Uh, a pretty significant player payroll after that Kyle Tucker signing as well. But I think Ohapi's playing well enough to where he can be the main guy at catcher for us, you know, after this year, once we let go of Real Mudo and, you know, move on from him. But he'll make less than Nolan Shanoel. I'm going to lower the salary a little bit to give us the best possible deal. And if we give him one worth like 8 mil per season, that honestly sounds great to me. And he wants a little bit more. What about 9 mil a year. Increase the salary. Okay. 9.2. There we go. He's on a contract for four more years. So Ahapi, Julian, Shanuel, the core of this team at this point, is under contract for at least the next four seasons. And now we got some other questions to answer. Probably going to wait on some of these guys later on. I definitely want to extend Walker Jenkins. He's up to a 76 overall. He's uh, hitting all right in AAA. And he will probably be called up in September once that rolls around. We're going to finally get back into some action here today. We're going to sim game three against the Marlins. And we take it four to nothing. John Means continues to absolutely deal. Alcantara gets the loss despite only allowing one run. And John Means went eight scoreless innings. 13 and 2 this year. His ERA is getting lower game after game. And Kyle Tucker homered in that game as well. We dropped the first game against a horrible White Sox team. They've got 33 wins. They just got their 33rd right there with a 3 to 8 win. And the loss was against. Chase Chaney gave up six runs. Got to be one of his worst days. And Caden Dan allows two in 2.1 innings. He is close to being sent back down. But now it's time to see what Brandon Williamson can do against these White Sox. And this game matters even more now because the Mariners have passed us in the AL West. And the wild card have been passed by both them and the Royals. So... Every game matters going forward. Cannot be dropping games against a team that is nearly 50 games below 500. Well, all right, folks, here we go. We are at home at Angel Stadium of Anaheim taking on the 33 and 81 White Sox, who took game one eight to three. It's gonna be a prime time game, it looks like, and it's gonna be our first real look at what Williamson since that deadline trade. First batter up is Andrew Benintendi. Cutter off the plates for ball number one. Yeah, right there. We are fifth in the AL wild card. We are actually less than one game back. So if we can win this one, we'll be right back in the wild card, at least tied up. Fifth pitch from Williamson in the... Well, not in the zone, but Benintendi thought it was just like I did. All right. Montgomery chops the first pitch that he sees right to shortstop, and Luciano makes the throw. Luis Roberts still in Chicago, huh? He leads the team in RBIs, but I wouldn't be shocked if he moves on to greener pastures here soon, considering how terrible this entire org is. But Williamson 
Misses the first three pitches. About to walk Roberts in four. It's fouled off, though. The count goes full, and that's off the plates. Robert takes first. And batting cleanup today is Andrew Vaughn. Fastball misses low. He gets ahead. Oh, ump, what are we looking at? That's got to be a strike three call. That is ridiculous. Another full count. And he chased it low. Jury, the throw to first online. We go top of the second. No runs for the Angels, but two guys got on base. There was a leadoff double by Julian and then a single by the guy behind him, but could not bring either guy home. Edgar Caro pops one up to the infields. And Drury underneath it for out number one. One, two to Colas on the inside. The two, two pitch just off the plates. Another full count. Sorry, plenty of these in the early goings of this one. Trying to avoid the walk and Colas got a piece of it, but inside out and he is retired. This is Nick York at the plate, acquired via trade from the Red Sox and He's been playing Major League Ball since the call-up, and he's actually been pretty solid. A couple of home runs, all of them solo shots, plus a .292 average is pretty impressive. And he looks at strike three, inning over. Starting off the third inning, Gonzalez flies out to center fields. Sterling Thompson playing out there today. And Zal is only batting a 185 this year. Definitely has not been, you know, as good as they want him to be and has had kind of a dip in production since last year. And Kevin Padlow is uh, not playing too much better either. He looks at strike one. A fifth round pick back in the 2014 drafts. And uh, not too familiar with him. Did he go around? Yes, he did. And Padlow punches out. It's a first time through the order, and there's three Ks for Williamson. That was number three right there. That is going to bring up the top of the order, Benintendi once again. But a pretty clean first trip through the order. And on the first pitch, the inning's going to end. It's still scoreless here in the fourth inning as Montgomery looks at the first strike of the at-bats. Still only have those two hits. Williamson has yet to allow one from the White Sox as Montgomery grounds it to the hot corner. And wow, Sean O'Well couldn't scoop it up. And that's going to be a base runner. An error from Brandon Jury, I guess that's going to be, and not on Sean O'Well. Interesting. I feel like he could have just grabbed that. And send there, double play ball, it's going to be 4-6-3. And the bases are cleared. Andrew Vaughn gets ahead with a 2-0 count. And there's the first strike. Fastball right at the bottom part of the zone. And upstairs missing. The count goes 3-2. And Vaughn fouls off the fastball. Out to 50 pitches is Brandon Williamson. And the 51st got him looking. Clipping the bottom corner. Thank you, umpire. Go to the bottom of the fourth. A leadoff walk by Jury and a single by Kyle Tucker has two men on base. And Soroka strikes three straight batters out. So Mike Soroka pitching very well in this game. Edgar Caro lifts one to left field and that one's going to leave. Chicago jumps in front off the Caro long ball. His fourth of the season. Really? 
We just watched him hit a very rare home run. Goal. Olas chases that low cutter. Got a piece of it, but not enough, and he is out. Who left that slurve up, but luckily, York cannot make do with it. Two outs. Let's end the at bat right here. Almost got him. The late swing, just to keep things alive. The 65th pitch of the day for Williamson. And he makes him bow it off again. Lengthy at bat for Gonzalez, and it's going to get even longer with that third ball. Another full count. He's have really added up here and made his pitch count a lot higher than it really could be right now. Another foul ball. Off the plate, he walks him in like 10 or 12 pitches. Jesus. He's going to bring up Kevin Padlow. Do not let this guy do any damage, please. Padlow's in a hole. He takes ball one. A brutal inning. Pitch number wise, but Williamson got Padlow for the second time. An error allows O'Neill to reach second base to lead off the bottom of the fifth. And Julian will double him home. Shonowell flies out. Guerrera grounds out. And then the inning's over. But it is one to one now here in the sixth. I'm going to let Williamson try and get through six to see if he can get that quality start. He's only allowed the one Hit, that was a home run. Nobody else has reached with a contact. Only reaching with a walk and an error. But his pitch count is getting up there, and he walks Benintendi to open the inning. A few too many of these, I think. Rounded to third base, and this should clear the bases. 5-4-3. Should make things easier. That was that was quite a swing right there by Robert. Just a bit in front of the changeup. Just got to get one more out, and then we can think about bringing in Blake Trennan or Jose Cisterno or something who are warming up right now. In his last four games, though, Robert has been swinging a hot bats. Over 430 at the plates. That one's left up there, and that one's going to get towards the gap. That's their first non-home run hits here in this one. And Dave Roberts says that's it for Williamson. He's done. He will not get the chance to get the quality starts after allowing the base runner. So in comes Blake Schreiner, who's been pretty solid for us for the most part of the season. We'll stay in for one more at bat and then we'll focus on the offense the rest of the way. Andrew Vaughn flies out to Tucker in left field. We're going bottom six. So Roca's day is done as well. In comes Devi Garcia. He's been great all year long. And Kyle Tucker keep up the hot streak. He's already singled once in this game. And that one is drilled right past the foul pole. And another one. Fourth pitch from Garcia. And it's a soft one that's going to drop in in right fields. Uh-oh. That could be a double play ball. Can Real Muda beat the throw to first? Yes, he can. One batter later. It's Sterling Thompson at the plates. And that one is lifted to right field. 
Does it have enough to leave? It doesn't. Caught at the warning track. We go bottom seven. Uh, perfect inning. Well, not perfect, but near perfect inning from Blake Trinan. He got three straight outs. And now we're here. Trying to put ourselves in front for the first time in a 1-1 tie. And clips one to uh, shorts. He's out. Edward Julian cranks one to left field, but an easy grab for the second out. And now to close the inning, I got Nolan Shanoel up. Can he keep it alive? The answer is probably not. Oh, it's down. He's going to be safe. A diving play in left field, but cannot get his glove underneath it. And there you go. It's going to be another single for Shanoel, his second of the game. And grounded right to shorts for an easy force out at second. All right, going to the eighth. Trinan once again retires the side. And Brandon Jury opens the bottom of the eighth. Still tied at one to one. I feel like one run can win this game right now for us. Drury blasts one to the left center gap. That's going to be extra bases. Heading to second base in there with a stand up double. Kyle Tucker gets a hold of it. It's got some carry and it's caught at the warning track. And a late start for Drury. He is not... No, he is safe at third. We'll take it. I thought he was out. Kyle Tucker almost left though, man. That was close. Real Muto's got a chance to bring home the runner. No, that's the one thing on that pitch you pop out. Oh, man. That sucks. Can't believe he just popped that one up. Last chance for the Angels is Marco Luciano. Upstairs, and the count runs full. Sterling Thompson on deck. What does Garcia give us here? Oh, that was a meatball. Way late. And that one has got some mustard behind it. It's going to be extras. Luciano with an RBI double. And the Angels lead here late at home. Huge at bat for Marco Luciano. And... You make Garcia pay for that lengthy at-bat. Sterling Thompson belts one straight to center. And that one is also caught just shy of the warning track. So many of these fly balls have been just a few feet or a few yards from leaving. We go to the ninth with a lead. We're going to let Trinan stay in. He's only got 20 pitches with that first pitch. Confidence high. Energy high. He's got to get three outs to win this game, but it's only a one-run difference. Oh, he got him looking. He painted the high inside corner. Got to love that pitch. Slider up and in. I mean, that is just a beauty. That's going to be it, I guess, for Trina. We're going to say he's done. And comes Leclerc to get these final two outs. I'm not sure how much warm-up time he's actually had. Hopefully it's enough to not allow a run. But he's got to face their two best batters, Elise Robert and Andrew Vaughn. Roberts behind one, two, and he chases the cutter on the outside of the plates. 
One out left to get to win this game. Just please don't give this guy like a meatball pitch or an off-speed left up. Just pitch your best at bat possible and get this 2-1 to victory. That one's just on the inside of the zone for strike one. And he pops it. Real Mudo behind home plate is there for the final out. The Angels take it. We've tied the series up. Now let's go win it. After a solid outing from our brand new pitcher, Williamson. Gonna go into some Edward Julian player lock here in game three, trying to come out on top of the White Sox in this series. Do not want to drop a series like this at home against a horrible team. And hopefully with Max Fried there on the mound, he can give us a good day and we can win this game. Two outs on three pitches for Freed, and he's about to get his third and four. That's how you start a game right there. We're gonna lead off the first facing Drew Thorpe, who has been solid but not great. A three and fourteen record, but that's only because their offense is absolutely horrible. But here we go. Seventy-five RBIs this season for Julian. That would have been a great pitch to swing on. And he gets a piece of the fastball, but he flies out to left. Same score here in the third. Two outs, nobody on, just in front of that one. And that one is also a late swing, but it's got some carry, and it's gone! An oppo taco for Edward Julian, goodbye! And the Halos are on the board. His 31st of the year, a career high. And it's only going to get bigger as we move through the last two months of this season. I did not expect him to be this good after we acquired him, but he is a superstar caliber offensive player. He does not make too many mistakes in the fields. He is better than his overall says. I'm saying that right now. Ido Hoppy are pretty similar in terms of their archetype at the plate, but Julian just outclasses him. Montgomery's next up here in the fourth. Only 22 pitches for Freed, and he is just getting through this game very quickly. Drew Thorpe still in, bottom of the sixth. Still just the one RBI from Julian, and he's back on base with a one hopper to right field. Might try and steal here with Julian. It's a late jump, and we're going to go home. Shano well into the gap, and that's going to bring home a second run. So Julian, the RBI, and now a run scores. He's been heavily involved on the offense. The 19th double of the year for Nolan Shanoel. And it doubles our lead. That one rolled all the way to the wall. Had no airtime at all. We don't get anything more. And in the top of the eighth, potential double play ball, never mind. 
We get the out at first, but a man to second. Max Fried still with a very low pitch count. That's a good play by Luciano to make the throw to first in time. Because that was almost going to get through. But a diving play by the young prospects. He's showing what he can do both at the plate and defensively here in this one. And we get out of the inning with no runs allowed. Jared Kelly now in here for the White Sox. And going to try to add on some insurance before this game is all said and done. Uh-oh, that's not going to be enough. I'll let that one go. A brand injury double makes it 3 to nothing here in the ninth. Max Fried trying to pitch a complete game shutout. Robert grounds it. This is going to be out number two. We are one away from winning this series. And we are going to win it. So Max Fried must have gotten through the entire game. A shutout win here in the third game against Chicago. And that will really help us out in these wild card standings. And that now leaves us tied with the Rays with a 62-54 and record. And if we win just a few more and keep the streak going, then we can maybe surpass the Orioles for the top wildcard spot. That's when you feel a lot safer. But we got to face the Braves, who are kind of around where we are at 64-52. and We got to face... Oscar Yanoa, who has been terrible this year. Then Michael Lorenzen and Strider, who have both been really good. I want to face Strider, though, if we get into a close scheme in that one. We drop the first game 3-4. to four. Joe Ryan gets the loss. And you cannot only put up three runs against a guy that has been terrible all year long. we got to do better here in game two. And it's one nothing Braves. Bottom of the eighth. So we jump in, trying to avoid a shutout here against Michael Lorenzen. On no Shano at the plate, trying to extend his hitting streak to 11 games. Lorenzen, already over 100 pitches. His day should be done here if we can just get on base. That is not going to do it, though. And they're going to take him out in place of Penn Murphy to close this game. He's been very solid. Spent the first couple years of the series in AAA, but now he's here. Kyle Tucker leads it off. And cranks it foul just in, or not just in front, way in front of the fastball. He only gets to 90 miles per hour, so he's not going to blow anything really by you. And that one is going to tie things up. Goodbye. Into the stands. Thank you, Penn Murphy, for the meatball. Now we can win this game, maybe, and walk it off. Number 19 for Kyle Tucker. His hot play is only continuing here in the month of August, and we need that. You can't just leave pitches like that right over the heart of the plates. Guys like Tucker are going to make do with those nine times out of ten. Can we get Ohapi going here? 0 for 3 in this game. Got a generous call from the umpire. And, man, that was the pitch to swing on. Just couldn't do anything with it. Moniak with a hot one to right fields. And he's on base. And that's not going to do it, man. He was a bit underneath it. That is the pitch to blast out of the ballpark. That just sucks. Here we go. Adele Herrera's played pretty well. A double and a single in this one. And he's facing a righty, which is what you want with him at the plates. Can he walk it off? Oh, just in front of the slurve. And that's going to end the inning. We're going to extras.
Great. Sackfly brings a runner home. Andrew Wants comes in for the Halos. Murphy's walked. And the bases are loaded. Andrew Wants, please don't do this to me. He allows another run. And it's 3-1. to one. We're going to get three runs to walk it off here. It's not making it easy for the offense. But we've only scored one run. Got to score more to win games like this. That's grounded. That's going to be the first out on the first pitch. We advance to run it up to third base. Now bottom of the order, Tim Anderson. Can he do some damage here? That's going to get to short. Can he beat the throw? Yes, he can. All right, so only one out, and we need one more run. It's going to be it for Murphy. In comes Reynaldo Lopez. And Julian's back at the plates. The big chance right here. 2-2 two, two count for Julian. And that's a base hit to keep the inning going. All right. Two men on. Nolan Shauna will next up. Just no double plays, please. And he gets hit. Space is juiced. Here's our chance. Lopez losing some composure and Kyle Tucker's back up. The only RBI in this game. This is who you want. And, oh no. That's going to be an out. No, it's not. Runners advancing. And we walk it off Kyle Tucker with every RBI in this game. The Angels win it. We've tied the series up. Big episode for Kyle Tucker, picking up right where things left off in our last one. That was not the best swing in the world, but he still got it to drop in. That will take us into game three of this home stand against the Braves. Winner of this one takes the series. We're trying to go for our 64th win of the series, and we have to face Spencer Strider to do it. We've got Chase Chaney on the mound, and his numbers are going up as of late. Open for a good game here to get himself back on track. Looks like it was a solid first two innings, so scoreless here. Bottom two. Only 12 pitches for Strider through one full inning. Tucker pulls it foul by just a hair and falls behind one two. Oh, that was that was a dangerous pitch. Almost swung there. And now Tucker gets into right fields. Lead off single. And we're taking off with Tucker. He is safe at second base. But our catcher did strike out, so they did get the first out on that play regardless. Luciano lines out to right. All right, Sterling Thompson, the last chance to bring home Tucker. And he lines out too. It's going to be a base hit for Orlando Arcia here in the third. Cheney in the middle 30s pitch-wise. And it's 3-0. Olsen and Austin Riley hit home runs. And they take the lead. And we're still in the third. 20 pitches later. Good grief. Albie's a base hit. Chain is going to be coming out here soon if this keeps on going. 
But a Brandon Jury RBI single brings home two runs. And if we can bring home the man at second, it's going to be tied again. That one just foul. Grounded straight up the middle. It should be enough to bring home Herrera, and it's going to be. And Drury is into third base. Nice. A big RBI right there for Kyle Tucker. We're tied at three. The inning's not over, though. At the corners for Real Muto. And he looks at the ball. They do want Tucker to steal again here. He can try it, I guess, to avoid the double play. And we're taking off. And Tucker, wow, he was running so slow. And he's out by a country mile. Was he sprinting there? I don't think he was. Real Mudo fails to put a ball in play anyways. So it's still tied. And Drury, 5-4-3 to end the fourth. But the second Matt Olson home run of the game puts the Braves back on top. We've got nobody out here. That's I should have laid off that one. Two men on for Kyle Tucker. Another chance with runners in scoring position. And it was the same two guys as his last at bats. What am I looking at here? Good lord, I'm gonna screw this up. Rounded. It's gonna be a double play ball. Damn it. There is a guy at third if we can bring him home, though. We don't bring him home, but Marco Luciano hits a solo blast, and then the Braves once again put themselves back on top. They have taken the lead three different times in this game. I'm already sick of it. We're running out of time to jump in front here. Tucker is going to get one to drop into left. An opposite field single with two outs. Real Mudo at the plates. He chops it to third. And he's out. Oh boy, it is now 7 4 thanks to Acuna. Awasiga just came in with runners at the corners for Austin Riley, who homered earlier in the game. This one is lifted, but at the warning track, Tucker's going to try and get him at home plate, but. He does not have the arm for it, even close. Well, this game's definitely over. Two outs for Kyle Tucker. Down by four. It's going to be pretty much impossible to win this game. So we're going to drop the series against a uh, team that's very comparable to us right now. Would have loved to win a key series like this, but you can't win all of them, I guess. Did not get a good day out of Cheney. But Kyle Tucker is four for five. I mean, what more can he do? Another chance for Real Muto with two men on. He strikes through the slurve. That bat's not over. The 2-2 two -two count with Penn Murphy just coming in. His second pitch is off the glove at third. And, oh no, go back to second. We got a run. It's not over. He's already homered once in this game. Can he do it again to tie it up? Luciano looks at strike three, and the game is over. An eight to five Braves win, and they take the series. That will take us into a road series against the White Sox. If we drop a single game here, I'm going to be sick to my stomach. And we lose the first one, 1-6. One we bounce back with a big offensive day. And we better win this game. We win 4-3. to three. Why does it have to be so difficult? Now we got two more road series against the Reds and the Diamondbacks. We're going to get through those and the series against the Dodgers next time out to round out the month of August. We're going to end it right here, but not before we before we make some tough decisions before we end the episode. We're 65 and 57 a game back right now from the Mariners. 
in the wild card race. We are now tied with the Royals for the third spot. So we're just going up and down. They've been playing better in their last 10. Luckily, the Rays are 1-9 in their last 10, which has really freed up a spot up here for the teams that were tied earlier in, in the episode. We have had some pretty significant pitching slumps for a couple of players, as Kyle Tucker is up to 268 at the plates, and this episode's going to really help him out. But Hayden Dana uh, actually you know, brought his ERA down recently. His FIP is still... In a good spot, a bit higher than we last checked, but the K per nine's up there. The walk per nine is extremely high. Same for Cisnero. That's got to get lower if we want a real chance to really turn this bullpen around. But Cheney is now one in four, and he's only got 0.1 war. A run per nine is a little bit too high for my like, and the FIP is up there. I think he's going to have to be sent down to AAA again. And he is playing in relief, I believe, right now. So we can probably figure out a new starter, maybe. Or I guess he was starting. So we're looking for a righty to come in for him. I don't think Caden Dan is ready for that role yet. All right. In AAA, I'm just curious, who's got the highest or the lowest fit? The lowest is 2.74 for Michael Darrell Hicks. Already got his chance in the majors this year, and he was not good. I don't think he's going to get a second chance. Does Sil Seth deserve one, though? He's been kind of reset. His ERA, whip, and FIP are all pretty low down here. His K per nine's pretty high. He wasn't as bad as Darrell Hicks, and we've already used the option once, so don't got to worry about it going forward. So we're going to call up Sil Seth and... See what he can do for us, maybe the rest of the way. But we're going to move him back to the roster, and we're going to send Chase Cheney back down for now. I just don't think that a guy this young with a 1-4 record out of the bullpen with that high of a ERA right now is going to be able to keep things up or really bring those numbers down. So he goes back to AAA, and uh, hopefully still Seth can... Come back in and do a good job for us. This is the wrong lineup. But that is going to end the episode, folks. A couple of guys are cold right now, but Julian and Kyle Tucker are hot. Those guys not are the most. Julian's still playing pretty well, but Odell Herrera, Mickey Moniak, and Tyler O'Neill are all in a bit of a slump at the plate. But nobody's playing horribly overall. We made sure of that after sending Franco down earlier this year. I think this roster is going to be what ends up getting us to the playoffs this year, but we're still a pretty long way out. It's still a month and a half to go and probably three episodes to get through all these games because it's going to be a really tight finish, I think, for that last wildcard spot. And right now, we're not really making a name for ourselves in the running for the top spot. So expect us to be probably one of the lower seeds in the playoffs if we make it. Going to end things right here, though, folks. Thanks for watching, as always. Please like, subscribe, leave your thoughts down below in the comments section, and I'll see you guys in August Part 2 here in Year 3.